pictured here are some typical Hall effect sensors. Um, they're small, often three pin devices that operate from 5 to 30 volts depending on the manufacturer and ratings. There's actually three types here that we will be looking at. The Hall effect switch, which merely switches on and off in the presence of a magnetic field. A Hall effect latch, that once it latches on has to have the opposite polarity to cut it off. It will stay on until that time. Then the ratio metric that puts out a voltage that is proportional to the strength of the magnetic field that it's detecting. Picture here is a Hall effect switch connected to an LED. When the south pole of a magnet approaches the face of the sensor, the LED will light up. As the Hall effect switches on, move it away, it will switch off. If I turn the magnet around to the north pole coming to the face, in the front, nothing will happen. It will only switch on if I come with the north pole from behind. So it does matter what magnetic polarity we have. And in this way I can tell which is north and south merely by observing when the LED lights up. Now I've changed the sensor out to a Hall effect latch. When I approach the face of the sensor with the south pole on a magnet, the LED will switch on and it will stay on until such time that I approach the face with the north pole of the magnet. And that's why they call it a latch. It will stay on. With the south pole it will cut it on. The north pole will cut it off. Finally, we have a Hall effect ratio metric sensor. This actually measures magnetic fields, or the strength or, or how strong your magnetic field is, along with what polarity. The particular one I'm using operates at 5 volts. With no magnetic uh, fields around the uh, sensor, I'm putting out 2.61 volts. As I approach the face of the sensor with the south pole, the voltage output should climb. As you can see, it climbs almost to 4 volts. Interesting part about it this time, though, if I approach the sensor with the north pole and not the south pole, the voltage will drop. As I get closer and closer and it gets stronger and stronger, if I had a stronger magnet I could drop it below almost down to a volt. And as I move the magnet away the voltage again climbs back up to 2.61 volts. In this way, we can use uh, this type of sensor to measure the strength of a magnetic field with appropriate circuitry. Pictured here is our very basic Hall effect sensor. It consists of a regulated voltage, a Hall effect element, which only puts out microvolts, and a differential amplifier to boost the voltage up to a usable level. These can be a bipolar supply outputting a zero voltage with no magnetic input or it can be single supply which is what I used which will put out about half the power supply with no magnetic input. Illustrated here is an expansion of the basic Hall effect with a Smith trigger. A Smith trigger will trip on a transistor when the voltage out of the amplifier goes above a certain point, but below it is ignored. So that's why it switches on with the south pole and not the north pole when the voltage dropped. 
that's illustrated again here with the south pole going towards the face. Both my latch and my on-off sensor were connected as shown here. In this case when the magnetic field on the south pole will switch on the Hall effect and switching the uh, voltage to ground lighting up the LED. This is the u but this isn't the only configuration. Another configuration some Hall effects can actually put out a voltage and thus we are say sourcing a current. Hall effects are low power devices and we can use transistors and power FETs to boost the power output level. Here's the basic electrical connections on all three sensors that I used. Now we'll illustrate a tack. Using magnets, passing a Hall sensor, we can count how many rotations on a shaft. 